Thank you, Chairman Thune, and thank you, Mr. Ross, for being here today. Um, look forward to our conversation. I've enjoyed hearing your responses to questions asked by my colleagues. Um, and I enjoyed meeting with you last week as well. Throughout the 2016 uh, election cycle, we heard a lot from President Trump about um, our country's approach to international trade and about the fact that international trade generally and uh, particular uh, uh, international trade agreements uh, um, have, have culminated in things that Mr. Trump uh, insisted were, were negative consequences to American workers and to the economy. He stated that he would have the uh, Secretary of Commerce, the person holding the seat that we're now considering you for and that you will hold if you're confirmed, along with the U.S. Trade Representative, to, quote, identify all foreign trading abuses that unfairly impact American workers and direct them to use every tool under American and international law to end those abuses immediately. I certainly believe that our country should not accept any trade deal uh, or, or any practice under any trade deal that unfairly harms Americans. Um, and for similar reasons, I, I, I also think that we should be cognizant of the fact that any action we take in retaliation, um, uh, whether through retaliatory tariffs or otherwise, can also bring about a set of circumstances that could be adverse to the American people, uh, some unpleasant consequences. You, there, there are some risks that have to be taken into account where you have to wonder w whether in some cases the medicine uh, might be worse than the underlying ailment for which the medicine was administered. So um, I would ask you if, you, if you're confirmed to this position, as you're considering in that position uh, a particular trade deal or a particular action to be taken relative to trade, uh, will you take into account the potential retaliation on American consumers and American supply chains, uh, what spillover consequences these might have, and uh, take those into account in making the decision? Well, surely. Uh, having been part of those supply chains, I have some fair understanding as to how they work and how they're essential. But uh, on the topic of retaliation, my mindset will be that of a world's largest customer dealing with his vendors. I, I view these other countries with whom we have trade deficits as our vendors. And while you need to treat the vendors with respect, they must also treat you as their largest customer, both with respect and, more importantly, playing by the rules of the road. And to the degree they don't, it must be enforcement, because we are a country of the rule of law. Some of these other countries are instead the law of the ruler. That's an asymmetry that permeates all kinds of sectors of their economies and ours, and we need to deal with that. Well, thank you. I appreciate your commitment to that. The rule of law absolutely is important. It's been a key part of why our economy has been so successful and a key part of um, what makes us competitive in, in, the, in the global marketplace. Um, and I appreciate your, uh, uh, your willingness to consider those um, potential spillover effects. Um, it, you know, as, as you know, uh, Article I, Section 8, the, the very first clause of Article I, Section 8, where most of Congress's powers are outlined, gives Congress the power uh, to set tax, tax rates, among other things, to, to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises. And to, uh, uh, the, the third clause of that same section also gives commerce the power, Congress the power to regulate commerce uh, with foreign nations in between the states. Um, do you believe that Congress should have a role in determining trade policy? And will you commit to, uh, to work with us and to consult with us before taking any action on your own? Well, I certainly believe it has to be an interactive process between Congress and each of the departments, and I see no reason that I would deviate from that practice. Um, in the final seconds I have, I uh, just want to note, I, I appreciate your willingness to look at spectrum, um, uh, to uh, take a look at the spectrum that the federal government currently holds 
and to, to look at areas where we might be able to release some of that federally held spectrum. Um, that'll help us address um, uh, some real significant needs uh, that we have in, in rural states uh, uh, and states like mine, like the state of Utah, where we could benefit from it. But I see my time's expired. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Lee. And, uh, did